everybody. I'm Dren Athelmeyer. About everything you guys are doing, and I bet you next year there will be a ton of people who will be like, last year everyone talked so much and it was great and I learned all these things about events. And so thanks for sharing and you know for telling us all what you're doing. Um, I'm going to go through my talk relatively quickly, but I'm always available to talk to you guys about events. Um, I don't want to get too far into stories and anecdotes because you have like a, an idea for an event and you want to just brainstorm with us or you know have us be a sounding board, that's great and I'm totally for that. So I'll just go over a few basic things and some tools to help you that you can tailor to the process you may already have or that you can kind of pick up and then build on and then uh, we'll take questions. So. I entitled this event planning more or less fun than stabbing yourself with a fork because I was talking to our communications director, Paul Fidalgo, and I, he said, what is your talk on? And I said, event planning. And he said, you should subtitle it uh, more or less fun than stabbing yourself with a fork. <laughs> so, and then he was like, that was mean. And I said, yes, it was. <laughs> it's fine. We, we, we do that. Okay. So. To start off, um, events have different purposes. Sometimes you're going to have an event, like some people said, that's you know community building or that's something that's a service project. But there's no reason that it can't be both. I know last year with you know Rebecca and Franklin and everybody talking about ESA and the um, service projects that they had done with Franklin's presentation, they said you know yeah we're going out and we're doing these services, but the way that it builds us as a team and the way that it makes our members closer is just invaluable. Like It's great. So when you're starting to think about what kinds of events you want to do and what you want to get from putting all the work into event planning, consider some of these purposes. And if you think you only need to do one kind of event on your campus, you are most likely wrong because People will say, oh, my campus doesn't care about whatever, we're just going to do a debate. Or my campus is lame, and so we're just going to try and do one huge event. And I really encourage you to try doing some of everything and you know, getting an idea of what the most people are going to show up for and really varying what you do because you're going to reach the most people that way. There are some people who want to there's no tomorrow, they want to just have these discussions, and they could not possibly care less about cleaning up a park. So, And then along with the purpose of the event, just what kinds of things do you want to do? I mean, clearly here you guys have so many good ideas for things and have already done so many different kinds of events. That's something like this last session where we all just talk about it and get ideas out there is going to be great. If you're struggling or trying to think of something new and fun, you can kind of riff off of everybody else's ideas. So basically, most people will do either like social events and eating and you know brunches or whatever. And then people have regular meetings, organizational meetings, lectures, debates, service projects, or fundraising. Okay, and then once you have that set, start brainstorming. Like some of the best ideas that we got in my group were from one person coming in and saying like, oh, I don't know, I kind of want to do whatever, let's talk about it. And that's what happened for the pseudoscience fair at my school. We used to do secular lunches like they still do at Grand Valley. And uh, we were just sitting around shooting the bowl and eating and everything. And I was like, ah. I never got to do science experiments and I never got to do a science fair and I feel like I really missed out on that and I love arts and crafts. So we decided that we were going to do a science fair and then it turned into, well, why don't we do it for like homeopathy and lights and... <laughs> <laughs> you can just turn them off. I don't... I'm a hipster. I don't need any of this technology. Well, I don't care. Okay. So anyways, um, so yeah, then we made these big project boards and had demonstrations. I dressed up like a Sasquatch, which I don't usually really show people, but there is a picture in existence if you want to see it. It was completely handmade, and it was about 400 degrees. Um, but, I mean, I never would have come to that 
by myself. I was with the help of all these other people. So get your officers together, you know, talk to the creative people that you know, talk to other group leaders, and just kind of be aware that at meetings, if everybody in your group is meeting and it's just regular members too, you may not want to bring up some of these things and ask them what their opinions are because first of all, some people have really bad ideas. Sorry. <laughs> And um, other people just don't care. So when you're having a meeting with your group and there's 40 people there, there may only be like six people who would actually know anything about event planning and want to talk about these different things. And the rest of the people will be like, hey, let's dress up like pirates and throw stuff at people and whatever. And yeah, so um, <laughs> I'm judgmental. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm not judgmental. <laughs> and then if you want to, you know, you can always feel free to talk to Debbie or I to ask us, you know, our opinions on these different things, to ask if we can think of any ways to help you or things to avoid, stuff like that. You know, totally feel free to ask us. Okay, and then some of the big things that you have to figure out, preferably sooner than later, are like, how are you going to pay for this? Are you going to use your school's budget? Are you going to do fundraising? Um, are you gonna have people pitch in? Is everybody gonna pay their own way? Things like that. Um, what are the rules at your school? If you haven't read the manual for student group organizing at your school, then I guarantee you there is weird stuff you don't know about. Because when I was uh, the president of our group, we found out that we couldn't provide cookies to our group unless we bought them through the school's catering service. We broke that rule because we're rebels and we brought our own cookies. But there's just weird stuff like that that you won't even know until you start looking into it or you'll know after the fact when you do something wrong and then the administration yells at you. Um, and then you have to think, you know, how are you going to get people a, to attend your event? Who is going to want to come? Who's not going to want to come? How are you going to target the people who want to get there or who would get something out of it? And, you know, what is your advertising strategy going to be? And then where and when will you hold it? I don't know how many times we thought, oh my gosh, check out this great idea that we have. It's going to be awesome. All we need is a stadium that seats 50,000 and four days. And that's not realistic. You need to actually talk to the people at your like office of student life and see what rooms are available, when, can we have microphones? You know, we planned an event that was like a big speaker and then found out after the fact, after we had planned all of this, oh, just kidding, there's going to be a Christian group in the room next to you and they'll be quiet with prayers and things and you can't have microphones. So you really have to look into every detail that you can before you get too far in the planning process. And then one thing that I do for pretty much everything, definitely for this conference, for any of the meetings and events that we had, I would sit down and have my quiet time and just write down every single thing I can think of that needs to be done. So for this event, for the conference, I have pages and pages of things I wrote down. I'm like, buy vegan buns, don't forget mustard, go to Party City, buy stickers, I mean just, every single tiny thing you can think of. If you sit down and you write it all out, and every time something comes to you, if you're in the shower, if you're asleep, you wake up, you're like, oh my gosh, rubber bands, write it down. Just write it down. <laughs> and then later you can organize that and put it into blocks of things that you can get done efficiently, all at the same time, one after another. And those can be your notes, you know, can add to your notes for how to do that next time. And then when you're looking at these things that need to get done, start thinking about which tasks can you give away to other people. You know, if there's just a few instructions that you need to give somebody later on, write them down right then when you're thinking of all this stuff. You know, me, I type like crazy fast with my long banana fingers, so I'm just like type, 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 type. Think of everything <laughs> that you can think of. And then, you know, set your budget, stick to it, figure out how you're going to make things happen for that amount of money. And do not procrastinate. I mean, yeah, ideally you'll have enough time to get all this stuff done 
And sometimes you don't, and you just kind of have to roll with it. But if you're leaving things to the last minute, you're going to forget stuff. You're going to be under more stress. People are going to give up on you. They're not going to help. So don't do that. And delegate. That's my pro tip. Oh, you probably can't see it. Anyways, uh, delegating helps take pressure off the main person in charge. Like Rose, I was a one-man show for a long time with my group. And... <laughs> It is not easy putting together every single thing. So if you can, wrangle people and force them to work for you. And then along with this, last year I went over checklists and timelines. Um, I said they were some of my best friends, and they still are. Uh, when you're doing these, you know, writing down all of these tasks and figuring out kind of your calendar for how things and when things are going to happen, Start thinking about putting it in the form of a timeline. If you have regular meetings, if you have a meeting for your group twice a month and you have a speaker come in, what you can do that's going to help you and that's going to help other people when they take over your group is say, we need to have a speaker booked two weeks in advance. This is how you find a speaker. You know, this is uh, the Speakers Bureau for CFI, the Speakers Bureau for SSA. You know, you can look and see who's in our area. Uh, look at the science faculty at your school. Write these things down and give yourself an idea of how long it should take you to get these things accomplished. And just give any tips that you can. I mean, it may seem silly to you because you already know how to do this stuff. But when new people come in and want to run your group, you can have these sheets and just be like, this is how you do a lecture, this is how you do a debate, this is who you talk to and when, and further instructions. It'll make sure that you get things done on time, it'll make sure that nothing gets missed or forgotten or anything like that. And like I said, just be detailed. Don't worry about putting in too many details. I mean, you probably don't have to be like, this is how you dial a phone, but realistically, <laughs> anything that you can add for other people so they don't have to find out the hard way or find out themselves is going to be great. And my pro tip is always bring a towel. I thought some people would appreciate that. Um, <laughs> once you have those things finished, um, consider how to promote. You know, with the pseudoscience fair, I did cryptozoology, which is why I was Sasquatch. And um, so I walked around the main like campus commons area in my Sasquatch costume. And it was terrifying because it was homemade, so it looked just horrible. And um, I got a lot of people to come to our event because they were like, what are you doing? And I was like, come to this room at this time on this day and you'll find out. And so they came. Um, and so, we, you know, we did that kind of promoting. We did flyering and talking to other groups. We would, you know, go creep on the philosophy club and be like, hey, what are you doing next week? You guys should come. And a lot of the time, it works. You're going to have people in other groups that are already interested in student organizing and in being, in, in being in, uh, in a member of these other groups. So more than likely, they will want to come to some of your events as well. And then uh, another advice for uh, advertising, seek design help whenever possible. You know, I am not a designer. I'm just, ugh, I'm not. Like, I could get in paint and, like, write something, and it would just be terrible. Um, but there are people like Ellen and amazing designers out there and Cody and there are people with really specific skills. Design is a skill, it's a science, it's an art. If you can find any of these people and trap them and force them to make flyers for you, it's going to be way more effective than getting into Microsoft Word and typing in Comic Sans size 72 in purple, hey everybody come to our event. So just an idea. Plus. When you do that, when you seek design help from people, what they can get out of it is another thing to add to their portfolio. So say, hey, wouldn't this atheist thing look awesome in your portfolio? You should make it for us. And then as the event approaches, rule number one to everything, always don't freak out. <laughs> if you freak out, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just... Keep cool, it's fine. I could get up here and give a really terrible talk right now and I bet you at least 10 people would be like, oh my gosh, Jaren, that was so great. So you're really, you're not gonna mess up that bad. 
You're not going to, I mean, except for like the setting your school on fire, which please don't do that. Um, it's it's going to be fine. It's going to work out. You'll survive. Um, and then be flexible. You know, sometimes you just have to roll with stuff. I think I told the story last year about how I forgot to bring something to my wedding for the flower girls. So I just dumped a ton of cereal in their baskets and they walked down the aisle at the beach eating the cereal. And I was like, you know what? That's totally cool. Like, just, just roll with it. You're going to be fine. So um, I really love thinking that I'm not a micromanager. If you can avoid it at all possible, please just don't. You're going to drive yourself bananas if you try to micromanage everything. Um, it doesn't matter how the garbage bags get in the can. It doesn't matter if every single thing is straight and perfect. What matters is that your event is happening and it's happening now and people are there or that it's about to happen and you're making it happen. So sometimes you just have to let it go. Not everything is going to be exactly the way you want it. Like the lights. Whatever. That's cool. I don't care. I'm, I shine on my own. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Um, and then I always kind of try to accept that I'm just going to forget something. There's going to be one thing, I'm going to forget it, and as long as it's not like my pants, it'll be fine. It's not a big deal. And um, know that you won't always have the time and resources that you like. You're not always going to have $10,000 to bring Neil deGrasse Tyson, and you're not going to have a year and a half to plan. That's not very realistic. So when we found out at Grand Valley that, you know, PZ Myers was going to be there in two weeks and he was willing to meet with our campuses, uh, with our campus groups, we were like, holy crap, we have to plan a PZ Myers event in two weeks or we miss this opportunity. And we just made it work. You know, we had somebody design flyers. We printed them super fast. We stayed very late one night flyering everywhere and chalking everywhere. And we made it work. It's not always going to be like that. Sometimes you're going to have, you know, way more time and resources than that, and that's great. But instead of freaking out about it, you just do the best you can, and it, you know, will probably go great. You guys are all really organized people, so. And <clears throat> okay, and then finally, one thing that Jen Bean taught me that is been so, so valuable to what I do and to how well I get things going um, is notes. Notes for next time. You may think now like, oh, they just ordered a ton of food and it happened to be almost perfect. That's not a coincidence. <laughs> That's because last time I said after the reception on Thursday night of our conference last year, I said we had this many people, this is how much they ate, this is how much was left over, this is what was liked best, and this is what I probably won't order again next time. I have notes and notes and notes and notes about everything. So even if you're not going to be doing the same kind of event again, thinking about it afterwards, taking time to reflect and saying this worked, this didn't, you know, these are other ideas I have, this is what I can totally scrap, this is what I forgot that I don't want to forget next time, write it all down. Put it in a Google Doc and share it with people if you're worried about losing it. It'll That'll totally, you know, work to keep it going for a while. Um, use your school's budget. Uh, I don't know how many people don't know anything about their school's budget. They don't know how to do a budget request. They don't know if they can even get money. They don't know anything. Your schools have money, most of them, um, to give registered student groups. They say, look at all this money we have for you. You plan the event. And what they get out of it is this awesome event being held on their campus, something that they can you know, point other students to or that they can say, look at how active our student life is. And you get money, <laughs> free money raining from the sky that all it costs you usually is some bureaucracy. And so totally figure out how to do that. You know, talk to an advisor, talk to somebody at your office of student life, whatever you can do to find that up. And then mix it up. I don't think I need to really tell you guys because you all sound like you have amazing events. But there are some times where people are like, yeah, we just have talks and the professor and the once a month, and whatever. And it's like, that is great, but also super boring if that's all you do. So think about new fun ways to bring people in. 
things that other groups are doing that you think would be cool, stuff that hasn't happened on your campus before, and that's going to help you be more successful. And then, like I said earlier, check the Speakers Bureau, check with us, check with SSA. Several organizations have Speakers Bureaus. There are often people in your area that want to speak for next to nothing because they want the exposure. And especially since we're all like the young people and we're on the internets with the Twitters and the pictures and basically doing their advertising for them, often they'll come speak for free. And then later on we're going to be doing some more talking about working with local groups and community groups and how you can make some of those things happen. So if you can, reach out to local groups. You'll find the old people that we complain about often have the money and the space. So um, you can totally be like, hey, we're young. We were born in the 80s or sometimes 90s. Um, give us money, and then your group will look younger. <laughs> and they'll do it. So that's great. And then, like I said, talk to me or Debbie if you need anything. You know, you can. I have cards out there. You can email me. I'm usually pretty good about answering email within the same day because I don't have like 600 at a time like Debbie. And um, you can email the on campus at centerforinquiry.net email address that we both get and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. We'll you know try and make whatever we can happen and just really be there for you guys. It's what we do all day. So um, the last tip that I put was um, feel free to creep on other groups' events to get ideas even if they are not at all in line with your mission. And that just you know kind of goes along with looking up what some of these other groups are doing and getting some ideas. So that's the last thing there. And there's that email and a fork. So I hope you had more fun than stabbing yourself with a fork. That's all. <laughs> Um, Steph is going to give a talk next, but did anybody have any questions right now while we set up? I'm going to get off the mic and just project. So, Steph, if you want to come up and get your talk going. <coughs> okay. Go ahead. Uh, my main question is, it's not really for me, but for other people. Like, we planned a really big event last year, 22 speakers, and we didn't know a lot of the little things to do. And I was just curious if there's anywhere or like other groups that are planning something larger than they've normally done, where there's a list of a lot of little things that you don't think of until they happen, because that happened to us and they caused a lot of problems. Right. Because we didn't think about all of these little details until the very end when they started becoming broken. Yeah, um, I don't know that I've put anything up on the internet yet, but we have um, on the on-campus site, there's a tab that says resources. And there are several things linked there, like my talk from last year is linked there, and Jen Ian's talk from volunteer management is linked there. And um, I'll make a note to myself to put up some of the things that I've done before, because I learned all that from CFI Michigan, you know, like having signs for tabling, remembering tape and markers and glue sticks and random things, remembering to bring cards or pamphlets for your group, stuff like that. Um, I will put one up as an example. And if anybody else ever wants to share anything like that with us, I'm more than happy to put it up on our pages as well because as much as you guys can share stuff with each other, you're you're going to you know get more out of these relationships. So. Any other questions? Yes. Um, maybe this resource exists and I just don't know about it. But as far as keeping track of what all these other groups are doing, some people did really big things that I didn't even know about. Is there any? It's like I'm thinking of like morning the. Um, Oh, what, yeah, something like that, but maybe like a monthly thing where we could all put together all the things we've done. Sure. Uh, it's just there's so many groups, it's hard to yeah. see what everybody is doing. Yeah, and <laughs> um, I really like it when people write to us and like share articles on the Course of Reason blog. Mm -hmm. I know like Andy Sasha is awesome at putting up stuff on their blog. And you know, he said, uh, several people do that. We're always more than happy to share those things for us as well. Um, there to share those things on our blog as well. But Debbie and I, we have not sent one recently because we've been planning this. But uh, we like to do the Campus Inquirer newsletter mm -hmm. that also is a record of everything that we know of that anyone wanted to share about over the last you know few weeks. And uh, we send those out once a month. If you go to the website up on the right, upper right corner, there's a place to enter your email address to get those. 
and we archive those as well. So anybody who sends anything in, even if it's just a paragraph, and you say, hey, this is what we did, this is what we learned, if anybody wants to do it, talk to us, by the way, you know, bring a towel, or don't forget your pants, or whatever, you know, any of those tips, I'm more than happy to put them all in one place for everyone. Cool. James Crafts, who I also love, I love next, I love next year we should just have a James Crop conference. I, I, quite <laughs> <laughs> I, I quite like stabbing myself with a fork, and that was even better, so thank you. Um, I, I actually want to follow up on the last question, which is that a shameless piece of self-promotion. The Humanist Community Project at harvardhumanist.org is designed exactly to share what student groups and non-student groups from all around the country are doing. And so we have a number of student leaders already writing regularly for the blog who write up what events they've done and what they've learned from them and give bullet point lists about how to avoid the pitfalls they things and stuff like that. And if you go to harvardhumanist.org, you can do a search of our database or it's categorized into six topic headings so you can find all the different posts that already exist to tell you what other student groups are doing. And if you want to write for the blog, we encourage people just to contact us through the website. It takes like 20 seconds to set you up as an author, and then you can write for the blog, and then you can share what your group is doing with all these other groups. And that's the whole point of it. So we really uh, encourage people to read it, because at the moment there's a, a ton of fantastic resources, including things like discussion guides and book lists and like downloadable resources you can use, and no one is going there. So uh, please go. <laughs> we'll share, that's awesome. So yeah, talk to James Crop. Um, I think Steph is almost ready, and I'm going to get off stage, but if you guys have any other questions later or want to talk to me during dinner or other breaks, preferably when I'm not like holding something heavy or running back and forth with food, because you'd be surprised how many times people are like, hey, 